Board of Education's Wednesday, April 19th board work session. Can we get a motion to open? Come to order. So moved. Second. Okay. I, well, everybody, yes, we're, we are um, okay with that. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Everybody had a chance to review the, um, well, go ahead, I'm sorry, Miss Alexis. <laughs> Pursuant to the general provisions, Article Section 3-305 and Section 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals and to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. I'd like to make a motion uh, to amend the agenda to add Jim and Dan Slore clean and sailor contract and make that an action item 4.08. Second. Okay, so moved. Oh yeah. I'll we do need to vote on the approval. Thank you, Carrie. Um, vote on the approval for the amended agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, aye. Any opposed? Okay, 3-0. And now vote to approve the agenda. All right, thank you. No, I appreciate it. Uh, so I move to, so I could, can I move as well? Yep. Okay, move to approve the agenda as amended. Second. All of, oh, all right, all opposed, all right, three zero. Okay, Dr. Spankel, we have elementary grading regulation. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can we yes. actually start with um, Dr. Kibler with the strategic plan update? Yes. 3.01. Yes. All right, Dr. Kibler. <laughs> Don't skip me. <laughs> you, it was not you're on not purpose. Get, you're not getting that easy. It was not on purpose. <laughs> you, you, you should have been out of here. <laughs> See, I should have been looking at the name over here. <laughs> Well, good evening, Ms. Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members and executive team, uh, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation, here to give an update on our strategic plan. Um, as you know, just again, for, for, you, for you all and, and folks watching, um, we are currently in the first year of a five-year strategic plan that we endorsed last summer, created under Dr. Salins' leadership in the Blueprint Advisory Workgroup. Um, in addition to the 20 or so members on the Blueprint Advisory Work Group, in that process, we spoke with over 150 stakeholders, um, ranging students, staff, families, community members, and it included mission, vis mission vision, uh, core values, goals, objectives, and a profile of, of a, a graduate from our system. And there is the, the printable brochure, the beautiful handout we had, if anybody would like to click that's on our website, it's there as well. Um, so we wanted to talk about kind of like what the next steps are. When I say what's next here, I don't want to give the impression I'm talking about what's next from this time or from like today. Really what I mean by what's next is what did we start doing last summer as soon as we endorsed the plan? What, what, where do we go from there? So we have this five, five year strategic plan. We set goals. We have objectives to meet those goals. So how do we make sure we do it? And that's what the purpose of tonight's presentation is, is to really show you from when we endorsed it, where did we go from there? And what that really is about is identifying metrics, indicators for each of the goals and objectives to watch our progress um, over the next five year period. So again, as, as kind of a, a refresher on the strategic plan, the goals that we had um, sort of as decided by what our, our community told us, goal one and achievement, and this is really thinking about students in the classroom, goal two, safety. Um, one of the most important things to our, to our constituents when we talk to them, goal three, wellness, four, staffing, and goal five, engagement. And we really like these clean, kind of goals and every, I think everybody was really supportive of, of where we um, 
where we landed on those for the strategic plan. And again, each goal, I didn't want to put the whole plan back up here, but each goal has subset objectives of what we will do to meet these goals. So what have we done so far and what are we doing? And we, I think this is important for, for folks to sort of understand and, and see. We have, we have a couple things that already naturally happen that support the strategic plan. So each individual school, the 14 schools, have school improvement plans. And what we've sort of asked to do is we have this existing tr structure with school, um, for school-based improvement, includes academic deans, teacher specialists, math and reading specialists, parents, um, as well as um, other building leaders, principal, assistant principal. They make these individualized school plans, compile, summarize with district-wide indicators and measures for their school. With the absence now of like statewide goals and indicators coming down from MSDE, we've asked the schools to look at our strategic plan and our goals and objectives and think, how can you use this model in your school? What goals or what indicators and metrics are you gonna work on to meet um, the goals of the overall strategic plan? We also have the blueprint, which we've talked about a lot over the last year and a half. And there is a lot of alignment with the blueprint with our goals of our strategic plan. Specifically, there, if you remember, there are five pillars in the, in the blueprint. Pillar two, high quality and diverse teachers and leaders. So that directly aligns with um, our staffing goal. College and career readiness, which would really focus on um, the achievement goal in our strategic plan. And pillar four, more resources to ensure all students are successful. We see that fitting in achievement as well as um, also the wellness goal we have. And then stakeholder engagement is throughout the um, blueprint, blueprint implementation plan, and we have it as a standalone goal for ourselves as well. And then also we have things like Maryland Leads. Um, um, there's tutoring in Leads. There's grow your own programs for staff, and all of that sort of supports um, different pieces of our strategic plan throughout. So what we've done is kind of using these steps to achieve our goals, starting with the school improvement planning process really, is looking across the schools, what did they identify as things they're working on in their schools um, that supported our strategic plan and bringing that all together for district-wide indicators and metrics. And so that's what we have for the next five slides for each of our goals, what kind of the schools are helping us to determine. These are, the, these are the metrics we can look at to make sure that we are, over the next five years, progressing um, to meet this achievement goal. It's things like monitoring lesson plan alignment to standards and delivery, um, things like state testing, so looking at how we're doing on KRA and MCAP, this so the kindergarten readiness assessment, MCAP assessment, so those are in all your core subjects. And then other, using other local assessments as well, like iReady, where we've showed you, um, I think when Ms. Kenna was here, the uh, supervisor of accountability, showing you progress to grade level standards over the course of the year. We have the district-wide tutoring program, um, career nights, crafting a new MOU with uh, the Upper Shore Workforce Investment Board, um, and providing increased apprenticeship opportunities, and then monitoring student group achievement as well to make sure that everybody is is progressing. So that's goal one achievement. And what I'll, what I'll say is, because we're kind of still in sort of the middle, we are coming to the end of the year. What I would like to do is at the end of the summer, the beginning of next school year, we'll actually bring back data to show where we've gotten in this first year. And then we will, over the course of five years, monitor our progress, okay? So we don't have that right yet because we're in it right now. So this is an update of where we're going. Goal two with safety. So we have uh, been doing tabletop exercises. We have the vector training for employees, conducting emergency drills, standardization of emergency procedures, and then our new coordinator of school safety and security helping us in this area as well. With wellness, um, embedding social emotional learning classroom lessons, uh, the Botvin life skills training for middle school students, that's about uh, uh, drug, drug use, I believe, 
partnering for youth activities at elementary and middle school, middle school sports, and our community health centers as well. And again, this isn't necessarily an all-inclusive list and it will grow as we, as we move forward in the next five years as well. Uh, when we talk about staffing, we have Maryland Leads and the Grow Your Own opportunities. Um, we have to, as a requirement of the blueprint, now annually submit a diversity and hiring report that Dr. Noel and I work on every summer. Um, we have instructional coaches for our new and novice teachers and we have increased access to professional development opportunities and that's something that's there if you look at our budget over the past two years putting in more monies um, on the front end for professional uh, development opportunities amongst our staff goal five with engagement a lot of some of the things we're doing we have the new um, maybe not new or reinvigorated citizens advisory council school system improvement committee um, Dr. Salins with her superintendent's roundtable meetings at school with staff. Uh, also, Dr. Salins with the superintendent's student advisory committee at every school throughout the year. Various parent community nights around the district. And, and some of those aren't necessarily new, but coming back as we come out of COVID and increased, I think everybody's seeing how much, that, how popular those are. You know, personally, I've got one this week for one of my kids' schools, one next week too, I'm excited about. Um, the MOU with Upper Shore Workforce Investment Board, we see this as not just with that organization a part, expanding on a partnership, but also with our local uh, business community, excited about that. Um, drafting a new MOU with Chesapeake College when we're talking about dual enrollment. And then as well, things like our school newsletters, board meeting summaries and new websites. And really throughout all of these, um, these groups, we're getting input on how we can keep improving, improving these things. So that's kind of what, what we've been doing this year. Um, we talked about last summer where we would sort of set these, these metrics, these indicators. We'd find these things this year. We would get baseline data this year, and then we would work over the next five years to make sure that we're seeing continuous improvement. Um, that's kind of, as a data person, I think the most exciting part to see your progress. I mean, it's a really rewarding experience to put a strategic plan together, but watching growth and improvement um, is kind of the most exciting part to me. Um, a lot of times with strategic plans, you might wanna have some baseline data at the beginning. One of our big issues with that is with COVID disruption of like state testing and things like that, we knew we were gonna have an issue in this first year and it would take us time to get sort of that baseline data. So that's where we're at with an update on the strategic plan. I feel like I spoke fast, maybe too much coffee in the last hour. <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's phenomenal how far we've come. It feels like we've been working on it for years and years. <laughs> um, so I think it's great. I, I just want to touch base on how much I think that we, the safety, I know that's, you know, so paramount to everybody and bringing uh, Mr. Savori on hand, you know, and he worked so well with the Sheriff's Department. And then we were um, privileged enough to go to, a, uh, be invited to a couple trainings. And I will tell you, I will never forget, stay calm. If he's taught us nothing else, you stay <laughs> calm. And, you know, and, and having people feel secure in doing what they feel is best, that not everyone responds the same way. So I think that's been really instrumental for me to, to see how far we've come with that, with that partnership. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, the diversity in the hiring, I, we're almost at the blueprint um, yeah. markings anyway. I mean, we've done so well with that, with the Grow Your Own and the diversity. I think we've done really well with that. Yeah. And, and also the websites. I mean, we, I think, have done a phenomenal job with Thank their you. websites. So just off the cuff, and of course, Rotary Career Day, yes. you talked about, and our school safety update coming up in um, a couple weeks. Yeah, May second yeah say. um check the what you know check the website because yes. it's going to be up there but i think we those three just really stuck out and i think we're um y'all are doing a fantastic job thank you yeah, I, I gotta second that i mean COVID set this world back in this system a lot of places back and i feel very comfortable with you and our staff about what we're getting and what we're seeing and how we're coming out of this i think we made a lot of improvements with dr uh, sandless and leadership and you're amazing i mean when we had the enrollment issue and besides just the, the private school, you, you go deep into the birth rate and other things that there's more than the story than just one maybe scenario. And I, I appreciate that when, when I hear things like that, because you feel more confident that you're getting correct information. And 
um, I can tell you, I think this school system's, you know, second to none as far as getting out of this mess. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kibler. Thank you. And again, didn't mean to leave you out. What's that? <laughs> didn't mean to leave you out. Okay, I'll forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sprinkle, yes. Elementary grading regulation. Yes. Good evening. Vice President Bentnett, Dr. Saylor's board members, and also executive team members. I am Marcia Sprankle, the Assistant Superintendent. And I'm here tonight because um, we actually, every year, we have to submit or actually sign off. Dr. Salins actually has to sign off on grade validity. Comar requires it, okay? But because of COVID, we kind of took a pause. The State Department took a pause. So now they've requested that we have a grade validity audit take place for uh, the 21-22 school year. Typically, it's October 1st of every year that is due, but they've extended it to May 31st. So to get us in alignment with Comar, we had to develop an elementary grading regulation. And so I just wanted to bring that here tonight to share that so that you would be aware of the fact that there's a process for grade changes and we are required by Comar to make sure that we have a process, a methodology in place as to how we do that and how we go about it. So elementary did not have that in place. So it's brand spanking new and you can see how we've developed it. That's why I see everything in red. Right. Yes, yes. I did have exactly. a question though on nine, the progress report score grade changing. There was a highlight on um, the italicized two. That's, what was that? That's no. Oh, okay. All nothing. right. No Part problem. of the editing. Okay. <laughs> no problem. I said the same thing. Yeah. This, this okay. will be told in Comer standards as required by the state as far as what we have to do for. Yes. It's a complete alignment. Okay. We had a team of folks, we had a small group to actually develop this elementary folks then we had our curriculum and instruction team take a look at it as well so you know i think this is a very good document for parents to look at so they know what they're doing and when they when a teacher comes in you know what stage we're at and when we're doing it and see how they're progressing i think it's just it's a good roadmap for them to know well, thank Look you. at this. Thank you, thank you for that feedback. Very helpful. Dr. Salins is leadership, so thank you, Dr. Salins. Lexus, did you have anything? Nope, I don't have anything. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll wait for the for the middle school. Oh, this is then. The, I'm assuming like everything else, these are posted for anyone to make. I'm sorry. Comments on the, all of these are posted on the website to make yes they are posted on the website but this is in regulations so it's actually under dr salins's purview specifically but we wanted to be sure that we shared it with you that's been our practice yes. so we want to be open about it, it doesn't become an action item it's an information right no item. absolutely right. i just didn't know since it was new if there was yeah. something okay yes but it's there on, it's actually there posted and i think it's good for the public to see this you know i mean to be informed on what's happening and happening going on Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, you're staying up here for middle school. Okay, so middle school, we didn't have as um, much work to do with the middle school regulation. But so we uh, made some edits and some changes. And so you can see the changes that are there so that we are definitely in alignment so that once we conduct that grade validity audit, um, we are successful. Any questions or comments? Nope. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. High school. And high school. Okay. And the same holds true for high school. We did have some edits to do, but not a whole lot of edits. Um, so high school was sort of like our footprint, so to speak. We kind of started with high school, the small little group committee, and then we pushed it out to our curriculum and instruction team and 
So from there, we kind of backwards mapped to middle school and then we went to elementary, so. I did have one question about the, um, where is it? The earning credit is as follows. Nope. Is that a page five? Let's just page go five. With that. Page five. The F in parentheses. We took out the or in summer school. But wasn't it during summer school that they could do the? I forget what we called it, where they could do make up. Credit recovery. Credit recovery. Yes. So is that not going to be an option? in summer school any longer? I'm on page five F. And yes, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, they, yeah, a student electing to not complete extra credit may not be penalized. Right. I, I'm in the wrong spot. Obviously. I'm on, well, let me see what the, okay. Determining final grades and credit, which is number three. Oh, if a student retakes, then, of course, so on mine, it's page six, so I apologize. Page six. Um, so if a student retakes a course during the school year, or in summer school, and in summer school is removed where credit was previously earned. So do you know why that was taken out? Okay. The or in summer school? So page six, where, right. Where yeah. are you at specifically? I yeah. guess page six, because our top page six. Uh, they will get credit in summer school, so. It, is, it just says if the student retakes a course during the school year, then it's, it's struck in red. It looks like it's been struck. Okay. Or in summer school. Where credit was previously earned, but it looks like it's been, it's in red, but it just so looks like it's striped. Have, oh wait, okay. okay. Some school. Okay. I don't know if it's trying to say that they would earn original, you can't earn original credit. Like original school, credit. And I think that's what it's kind of trying to correct that. Right. May need to smooth that out okay. just a little bit. Smooth it out because I love the credit recovery we had. That was such a yes, success. We, we, we have credit recovery yes. this summer. And we're we not do. taking I, that away. I think it just is not worded as well as it could be worded. Because okay. what I think okay. it's what they're trying to avoid is that they can earn original credit in summer school, which they cannot. Right. They okay. can only earn um, credit recovery in summer school. So we'll get that. that I mean, oh, I could call. definitely fix yeah. that. Yeah. So they can't take a new course in summer school. It That's can just exactly be a course. right. It's Absolutely. only a course they've if taken they were previously. they not successful in. They're, not, they're, they're trying to recover from recover that. Recover it. That's but exactly they, right. But then it would count as credit. Yes. Once they pay, meet yes. the criteria. Yes. Yep. So we'll we take a look at that and make sure that it's clear. Just smooth it out a bit. Yeah. yeah. Good call. OK. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you any other questions? No, oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, 4.01, Human Resources and uh, Report. So can I call for a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the Human Resources and City Bus Drive Report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. <laughs> Truck loads. <laughs> Good evening, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Jane Towers. I'm the CFO here for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Tonight we bring before you a request for approval of two purchases or two, excuse me, truckloads of paper from the supply room in the amount of $60,715.20. We are looking at utilizing the Omni Partners contract with this purchase. We took a look at six different other vendors for this to find out the best price and value, and they were selected. And I, we had old machines where I used to work and always had problems with Xerox machines and paper. Never got along mm -hmm. too well. <laughs> the, this paper works. I mean, either some of it was grainy and some of it was, you know, not the right basis weight. This is. 50 pound or whatever we're supposed to have and meets this criteria that the Xerox man is not going to tell us we got the wrong kind of paper or something. Correct, correct. This meets the um, quality standards that our current copiers request. And um, just a background history, because of COVID, uh, there was a shortage of paper. Now we're able to start buying by the truckloads again to obtain the best price. Give it while we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
I make a motion we approve paper truckload uh, for the total amount of $60,715.20 uh, budgeted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any approved? Uh, opposed? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Pinder. Oh, yes. About some painting. <clears throat> Good evening, Vice, Vice President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members. For the record, my name is uh, Sid Pinder, Chief Operating Officer. Um, <clears throat> I'm before you tonight um, seeking approval for a uh, painting contract for Kennard Elementary School um, to request board approval. Um, we want to send a letter of intent to Vigil Contracting um, incorporated to paint the interior of the building at Kennard Elementary School. We'll be uh, utilizing the Gordian source well contract um, MD R6GC0105261. Um, same that we've previously done in the past three years. Uh, the last time that canard was painted was 22 years ago. <laughs> Portions of it were painted 11 years ago, but if you know, within the operating budget, we've been able to paint. Um, this will be our fourth year. So all elementary schools after this summer will have been painted and we'll be able to be on that 10 year cycle of getting all schools painted within you know, a 10 year cycle. Um, I'm seeking like approval. Um, for a physical dollar amount of $173,729. And this will come out of the FY24 operating budget, which I know is not approved yet. Um, we you know, have asked for it, it was in there last year, but we're seeking a letter um, because we need to move ahead with securing the materials and lining up the contractors. If we wait until July 1st, it, there's no way to get, it, to get it done. But we had painting in our previous budget. Yes, sir. It's not, it's not, it's not a new line or anything. No. I have a question just about, it's off topic, but it's not. Frequently our, our contracts have that 5% contingency and also for when they run over. Is it possible to easily, easily as a keyword here, track and have a reporter if we have any? Yeah. I mean. If it's a hassle, it's just not. No, normally we don't run over that, but okay. you put that 5% in there and that kind of catches anything that somebody might have missed or if we're going to run into an issue that we don't know exists behind a wall or if we're going to and i'm not talking just about painting but for other projects i mean you, you kind of want to have it even when you're doing like a massive construction say of you know stevensville middle school you wanted to have a contingency in there in case unforeseen circumstances pop up mm -hmm. like at that school especially when you were you know digging underneath and looking under the ground it's been sitting there covered up for 50 years um, but we can track that because sometimes we don't we don't need that. Right. Um, but it, it it's easier doing it that way than coming back to you and saying, uh, "Hey." Oh, absolutely. I guess I was just thinking yep. of patterns. Yep. Like if we have a particular contractor who's f frequently at that five percent over, that maybe we need to start thinking that they may not be the best value mm -hmm. if they're always utilizing their five percent mm -hmm. contingency kind of thing. If so if you look sense. at the contract, the contract is for the amount provided and then mm -hmm. we put a five percent on our own okay on top of that. okay so, so to go to go above the to utilize that five percent you or one of your uh, people would be we would be authorizing additional yeah. mm -hmm. when you see the contract for them it will be for that amount not the five percent but we have that five percent just in case unforeseen circumstances pop up okay make a motion to approve the canard elementary school interior painting uh for $173,729 budgeted out of FY operating budget. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Well, Thank you. Um, next item I bring before you is approval of a contract um, and, well, letter of intent with Vigil Contracting Incorporating, Incorporated uh, to paint the interior of the uh, Ken Island Elementary School. We will be utilizing the same um, approval process with the Gordian source well contract. Um, we're looking to get started on this June 15th and have complete by August 15th. Um, the total amount is um, $182,401, and that does include the 5% contingency. The actual contract with um, um, the actual contract with the vigil is for $173,714.66. Thank you. 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 Thank
That school was last painted about 14 years ago. But again, this will put us on par to have all elementary schools completed. And this is a generic question. These people are capable of fulfilling this contract yes. in a timely manner. We've used them many, many times, and they've always produced. Make a motion to Ken Allen Elementary School interior painting for $182,401. Budgeted yes, FY24 operating budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item I bring before you is a uh, EMS control panel replacement at Centerville Elementary School. Um, seeking approval of the contract between Johnson Controls and Queen Anne's County Public Schools to purchase and install a new EMS control panel at Centerville Elementary School. Uh, we will be utilizing the source well contract 030817 Johnson Controls. Um, basically, what you have is the, it's 20 years old, the head end no longer functions. Um, and the head end is what controls every single point in that building. So every classroom, um, every unit event, every air handler comes back to this controller. And right now we're operating it basically on the old DOS. We're looking there and trying to figure out which line is we're looking at. So this is actually, I would consider also an emergency um, so that we can actually see the units and see the um, points of contact and what's being, you know, how the units are operating. That school has a lot of them too, doesn't it? What's that, sir? That's the one school that has a lot of units in it. Yes, yes. It's, I mean, you're, you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of points that come back to this one head end. And this would be for, uh, I believe, 54100 in the FY23 operating budget. Make a motion for cell energy school EMS control panel replacement. Physical impact $54,100. Budgeted yes out of the FY23 operating budget, which would be the current one. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next item I bring before you, um, action item, is to rescind the FY22 CIP funding in the amount of $663,000 for the roof replacement to project roof replacement project at Kennard Elementary School. Um, this action will send the funds to the reserve account for uh, Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Um, if you remember the um, Maryland Public School Construction Program and IAC um, awarded us $663,000 for that roof project, we're seeking approval to move that money to um, Ken Island High School roof replacement so we can get that accomplished and if you go by in accordance with 5-303 uh, J3 of the education article, if school construction funds provided to a county in one physical capital improvement program year cannot be allocated to or used for the eligible project within two years of the initial authorization, the county may opt to have the funds, one, applied to another eligible project um, or revert it to and maintain in the reserve appropriation account for eligible product projects in the county for FY24 CIP. So by reallocating this to um, Ken Island High School roof, we'll be able to have that um, move forward. And that was that project was well over. I mean, that went from mm -hmm. what, six million to nine million or something. Yep. And, and Kennard. So we'll be able, be, yeah, we'll be able to reapply for that. Okay. Um, and one year pushing that, I mean, capital budgets get moved all the time, but one year is not gonna be a. No. No, sir. I make a motion to reallocate funding for roofing of Kennard to Kennel or to reserve for Kennel High School, total 663,000 state reserves of FY Capital. Second. 22, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Um, the next time I bring before you is the uh, makeup air unit replacement at Ken Allen High School. Um, approval of this contract with JCI Simplex to replace three makeup air units at Ken Allen High School. We would be utilizing the source well cooperative purchasing contract 031517 JCI Simplex. They will furnish and install three um, makeup air units to pull in fresh air from the outside um, into the building. Um, makeup air that needs to be recirculated. The contract price is 124000 
$335 with the 5% contingency. Um, we are able to, we applied for and received um, funding from the HSFF project to get $45,000 from the state to put towards this. So we've reallocated um, our, some of our capital funding um, in connection with the county to put um, $85,552 to that. Um, so total physical impact would be $130,552. And if you want clarification on what, what the units do, you're, so your, outs, your, your home circulates the same air over and over and over. With schools and commercial buildings like that, you're required to pull in 15, 20% outside air. So, you know, to exhaust that. So these three units are no longer functioning and with the county allotment in the um, grant that we receive, we'll be able to replace them. They're, they're 25 years old. So once this is complete, that whole school has brand new chiller, it has brand new EMS controls, you know, we're in good shape there. Make a motion to make up, uh, to approve, make up air unit replacement Calhoun High School, total of $130,552, uh, FY22 state capital funding of 45,000 and relocation allocation a county capital funding of 85,552. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Four or eight. One more. We oh, yes, we yes, amended. we had the amendment. Yes, sorry, we do. Sorry. Yes, one more. <laughs> sorry, last one. <laughs> um, tonight I'm before you for uh, seeking approval of contract with Aegis Floor Life, Weir's Flooring. Uh, to clean and seal all wood and rubber gym dance and stage floors for every school within Queen Anne's County Public School System. Um, we uh, have factory certified technicians uh, will be performing the work. Uh, this is something that we do every single year within our um, gyms, within our dance studios and stages to make sure that the proper traction is there. Um, the physical Im uh, impact would be 56428 and that would be from the FY24 operating budget. Um, we did have three different um, companies respond along with um, the Robbins Sports Service uh, source well contract for comparisons. And looking back over the past couple years um, of what we spent, we're right on par with that. I've seen it fluctuate up a couple thousand dollars. I've seen it drop a couple thousand dollars and we're about right in the middle of where we should be. Thank you for the comparisons. That was nice. Well, you're welcome. Yeah. Make a motion we approve the gym and dance floor uh, clean and sealant for a cost of $56,428 FY24 operating. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so future meetings. We have a May 3rd regular board meeting at 6 p.m. and May 17th work session at 5 p.m. Any, is it okay? Um, that's, we don't need to vote on that? All right, right on. Yeah. Meeting to adjourn? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, meeting is adjourned. Aye.